Welcome to 24 Hours Nothing But Net. The U style, baby. Trisha Cullip, the head coach of Miami. <laughs> oh my gosh, you look great in those colors, lady. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. You should be excited because you have earned it and you've deserved an opportunity at the Power Five level. You've been so successful at the Mid American Conference at Toledo and you're such a great player at Purdue. I'm so happy for you to be able to have this chance in the ACC. Well, thank you. I'm I, I'm really thrilled to be here and, and it's been fun. I've been here for three weeks now and uh, I've enjoyed every single day. I mean, Trisha, I, I've known you for so long. Uh, I hope the Miami fans know how good you are and what they're getting as you're, you with a head coach as a leader. Tell us a little bit about your style of play and what, what we should anticipate. Well, we love up tempo. You know, it's something that we'll bring with us from uh, from Toledo, where we came from. But I, I do think that uh, we're going to be a team that takes good care of the basketball, that searches for the best shot. So we'll definitely push the ball, uh, but we're not going to take just any shot. Uh, I, I've prided myself in coaching teams that have done an incredible job with assist turnover ratio, uh, that put our put our players in great positions to score to take advantage of their strengths. Uh, now, what that looks like will depend on who we sign in the in the remaining part of the portal because we've been very successful with four signees that we've gotten so far, uh, but we're not done yet. And uh, this week could be telltale for us with a couple more additions. So I can't tell you everything yet. Uh, but <laughs> very, very excited about the pieces I think we could still add. That's okay. I know you subscribe to Shoot Till Your Arm Falls Off. That's all I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> So um, speaking of the portal, how about the Cavender twins are back? ACC fans remember Haley and Hannah and their experience the first time around at Miami. Now they're going to get a second chance. This is really exciting for all of us. I'm thrilled they wanted to come back. And I think it was so important to them. They wanted to play together. And uh, anyone that knows twins, any twin, they love being around their, their sister. And uh, the fact that they can finish out their careers together was very enticing for them. I was thrilled that they called and said, hey, could this be possible? Because uh, they loved being here. They love their experiences here. And our fans are so excited to have them back. And everywhere I've traveled since they said they're coming back, that's the first question I get asked is uh, how are they doing? And they cannot wait to see them play together. So we're thrilled. I loved interviewing them, spending time with them, uh, because I know how competitive they are. I think they are incredible in their social media space and they get a lot of attention there. But when you look at the pure athletic, competitive hoopers that they love the game and you can see it in the way they play, if you're paying attention, that's the part that I'm excited about. I know they'll bring a lot of attention uh, back to Miami, back to the game, to the ACC, all of that. But the pure just grind it out, practice in the gym every day. You got to love that spirit about them. They work out four hours a day. And if you follow them, you know, a lot of people know them just because of the social media uh, presence. But man, they back everything up. Uh, you're right. They're competitive as could be, uh, but they're up at five in the morning getting ready to work out. They're so careful about what they eat how they treat their body, uh, working out in the weight room, uh, being in great condition, making sure they're getting plenty of shots up as you and I love. Uh, but I'm, I'm just so excited because for them to come in and help us set the tone for what we want to do here, uh, they're great teammates, they're great leaders. Uh, I'm so excited about everything they bring, uh, not just what they bring on the basketball court. I know you're talking about some detail about the way they work, but I want to talk about your detail because I know how hard and how long you've spent in this game trying to just advance the game, not just as a head coach, but the other roles that you've had as a leader inside the game. We start talking about what's coming next inside women's basketball. What do you see? Well, I think the, the great thing overall in the nation is the popularity right now. You look at the, the fan attendance at a lot of games. I mean, uh, it's been incredible over the past year. And, and not only that, but uh, the exposure, uh, the TV exposure that we're getting in our game, uh, that's going to help attract even more youngsters to pick up a ball and get in the game and, and make it even better. But I'm just thrilled to see what maybe five years ago where we were to where we are right now. And then you look forward to say, gosh, where can we go? It was exciting to see TV contracts renegotiated for women's basketball. It was excited to see the buzz at the Final Four. Uh, I just, I'm so excited because I'll be honest, here we want to build our tenants. Uh, it's, we've got some very loyal Miami fans, but I, I know with the Cavendish coming back, people are excited. They're excited about the kids we're signing, but we really want to build an extremely, uh, passionate fan base here. 
and I know we can do it. I think some people uh, think we can't because of all that sunshine, but I tell you what, you've got to come in out of the sun sometime. And <laughs> there's a lot of basketball fans here. What I laughed about is that there are a lot of Toledo fans who, gosh, guess where they retire? South <laughs> And so we're going to cap, I, I teased the Cavender twins. I said, you bring in the younger generation. I'll bring in the retirees. And together we're going to build this fan base. <laughs> I I just love that your vision about all of it, Tricia, because I know whatever you say, you're going to do. You have served on multiple NCAA committees, WBCA committees. You've been past president. You've done so many things to help advance our game and to put our game in a position where we are prepared to take the next step. I hope that you don't have to do any more committees now and you could just spend your time on your team because I know that's truly what you want to dive into. How's all that going? Well, first of all, I'll just tell you that it was a pleasure to help serve because for so many years, I benefited from a lot of people uh, in the past that, boy, they they worked hard to build it to something that I could enjoy in my generation. Uh, you know, Coach Dunn, even, uh, who was a previous Miami coach, it's kind of neat to follow in her footsteps here, but you know, once upon a time, she was the president of the WBCA. And so now I got to follow her footsteps there. But uh, I, I hope that we capitalize on all of that here. Um, and, and, I, and I hope, too, I'm not on a committee for a while because I've got a lot of things to do here in building our roster, in building our fan base, and in and, and getting acclimated. Uh, we've got a, a staff here. I'm very excited about our staff uh, to keep Coach Fitz, who did a wonderful job for Katie. And let's talk about Katie for a second. What yeah. an amazing job. Uh, she did with this program. I had a chance to visit with her last night at a women's event we had on campus and got a chance to meet Donna Shalala, which, man, what a great tradition here on our campus between the two of them. Uh, but I'm so glad Katie's still here. I get to benefit from her knowledge and her experience because she still maintains a position on our campus. And I'll take advantage of that to the hilt because she has such a great, vast experience experience of, of knowing all the boosters, knowing the landscape, knowing how to build it here. Um, I have so much appreciation for her uh, and I want to build on that. And so to have Fitz stay, uh, to have Lonnie and Margie, the two Dobos stay, um, and then to bring with me two assistants from Toledo, Daniel Page and Jesse Ivey, who are phenomenal at what they do. And then we most recently added Muriel Page, who played at Florida, who was on Mississippi State staff. I just can't yell, hey, Page, down the hallway, because I got two of them. <laughs> um, you know, the exciting thing is both Muriel Page and Daniel Page will be in the Olympic landscape this summer because Muriel is an assistant coach for the Canadian Olympic team. Daniel Page is, is a co-head coach of the Serbian Olympic team. Uh, so we have a great, uh, we have wow. some great opportunities to build some relationships there. And I'm just so lucky that I get to coach with them. Uh, so from the coaching standpoint, we're almost done rounding out the staff. I still have to hire a video person and I've got another, another position to hire. Uh, but but we're rounding out the roster. We've got 10 kids on the roster right now, and we hope to add two or three more in the next week. I just love the relationship between old coach, new coach. You know, Katie Meyer is a legend in the ACC. I don't know anybody across basketball that doesn't like Katie, respect her, respect her X and O ability, all that comes with it to be a head coach. She's one of the top, and, and our game's going to miss her in some respects, but because you're so willing by keeping Fitz and, and Margie and Lonnie, they, they are amazing people. They're a part of the fabric of ACC basketball. It's such an important move. I bet it didn't take you long to figure out that. And then of course, Danielle Page was such a great player. I covered her when she was a player at, at Nebraska. I remember how good she was. Uh, and then of course, Muriel is a legend, right? I mean, this is going to be really fun watching you develop alongside the Cavender twins, what will be a really entertaining upstyle uh play. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. When you um, get ready to roll the ball out for the first official practice and you're wearing the Miami gear and you're in the arena and this is your, you know, I know this has got to be a dream of yours, Tricia. How, how do you put that into the proper emotions? Well, even walking down the hallways, I, I just, I went to my first head coaches meeting today and to be surrounded by, you know, Coach Laranega and and Mario, you know, it's there's some amazing coaches in this building that I hope to learn from. I had great relationships with all of the coaches at Toledo. And I think that's one thing special is that people just think about the basketball landscape. But when you're in this kind of space, you want to learn from everybody. And I want to soak up as much knowledge as I can from all the other coaches here. Uh, but I laughed walking down the hallway. You and I can appreciate this, that I walked down. Uh, there's a there's a hallway that has all of our greats from the history of this program. And I laughed that the one I played against, her picture's in black and white, and that's Francis Savage. Uh, <laughs> I laughed. I'm like, where's the color picture? Uh, at least I'm not in the background getting scored on. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know, what a great tradition here. 
And I, I the biggest way I can honor it is for us to work our tails off and to maintain it and build on it uh, because so many people built this. And I think every day when I get up, all I think about is how can we do our, our best job possible to honor the legacy of all those who came before us? And that's to continue to build an incredible uh, program and to keep attracting great student athletes that can help us uh, not only win games, but hopefully in the future win championships. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to watch and I can't wait to get down there and call some of your games. I hope that uh, I'm going to put on my bucket list uh, dinner and drinks with you and Katie together, which hey, is really fun. Right. And this time I might be able to afford them. <laughs> head coaches by that's the rule that never changes that's always the rule no matter especially in the acc uh trisha you have from the beginning supported our efforts around special olympics i, I mean i call you a, a great colleague a great friend a great a peer an incredible mentor to so many uh and, and special olympics has been so important to me and my family and you have been right there from the very beginning helping us uh, in, in lots of different ways, including supporting our efforts. Um, Special Olympics is important. Why is it important to you? Obviously, you know, we all know that we've all been blessed in our lifetime and, and I want to help every student athlete uh, and every athlete reach their dreams. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what obstacles that all of us face. We all have obstacles in our life, but I think the joy that sports bring to us um, you know, we are all blessed by that. I had a, a student athlete that played for me at um, the University of Toledo, Lucretia Smith, who worked in uh, a special abilities program in this in the city. And and so watching her and the joy that it brought to her, uh, but also just to continue to help people reach their dreams. I, in every facet of of our life, we have the chance to bless people, uh, to continue to help people, and that's something that I want to continue to do, no matter where I am no matter what community I'm a part of. And so Debbie, it's a, it's a blessing to help you and to help all those, all those athletes that you continue to help and people. And anytime I can, I'm going to, I'm going to reach back and help you. Uh, Cause I really believe in the efforts uh, that you have continued to do and what an impact you've made. What, what's your last dollar amount you raised last year? We are in five years at 860. So this year we right expect to cross a million. And I, I really think we're going to get there. Um, you know, penny by penny, that's pretty much what we've done. It's been very much a grassroots effort. And I call it the first million, Tricia. I'm, I'm calling it the first million. You know, you like we're going to keep going. And, you know, I'm going to shoot till my arm falls off till I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I mean, I, I've learned a long time ago not to talk to you about defense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I've never played defense. I'm only playing <laughs> offense. And I only say that in every aspect of my life. I don't play defense. I'm going on offense. And rightfully so. You know what? Offense does win games too. Uh, we've got to make baskets, but that's what we're chasing down this week. Some bucket getters. Well, I know you'll get some. And I know that you have impacted our ability to raise money impacted our ability to create awareness. And I love hearing uh, you share stories about how Special Olympics through the eyes of one of your players has helped impact you. So thank you for being with us on 24 Hours but Nothing But Net. ACC fans are in for a real treat when they see your team roll up. And uh, I, I'm excited for you as much as I'm excited for ACC and basketball for you to have a chance to do this. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, Debbie. And as always, I, I think the world of you and I commend you for everything that you do, uh, not only for our sport, but to help others.